Hello everyone. Uh, thanks again to Analytics with you uh, for having me uh, here as one of the speakers of your uh, data hour uh, session. I have been actually following um, uh, your um, webinars for quite some time and also uh, the website and the resources as well. So it's been um, a full circle from reading and understanding concepts um, on analytics with you to actually uh, come here and uh, give a talk. Uh, I hope that um, this talk will be helpful in um, whatever projects that you are, are doing, um, whether it's at the college level or the university level or at a professional level. So yeah, let's get started. Right, so this session um, is about um, topic modeling and specifically um, the clustering part of topic modeling, right? So I will do my best uh, to kind of like monitor the chat, but if I'm not uh, able to, uh, we will have again a question and answer session at the end of the presentation as well, right? Uh, so you can ask your uh, questions uh, over there. I'd love it um, for the session to be interactive as possible. It's unfortunate that I can't see you um, in person, but at least I hope that you can see me and um, yeah, uh, we can take this forward, right? So a little bit about me. Um, so I work currently as a cloud machine learning engineer. So basically the title says that I have to work um, on the cloud. So like providers like AWS, Azure, and GCP and stuff like that. So those are uh, the tools that I work with on an everyday basis. And also there's the machine learning part uh, where the model building um, uh, uh, aspect comes in. So basically the feature extraction, uh, model uh, building, model evaluation, model metrics, all that um, stuff. And my main responsibility is to kind of like help um, data scientists um, also to kind of like uh, help them to deploy their projects in um, the production environment and make sure that whatever is there on the Jupyter Notebooks um, as experiments actually are in reality uh, built and uh, customers are getting to use those uh, really cool uh, machine learning projects, right? So that is my main responsibility. Um, last year, I completed my master's um, in data science um, from King's College in London. Uh, so my thesis was on um, NLP project. Uh, so it is basically on uh, Wikipedia uh, protection articles. So basically there are certain articles on Wikipedia that need uh, protection. Um, if uh, we sense that it's gonna be some vulnerable um, event is happening or like there are like um, bots and trolls who are trying to modify data on the Wikipedia article, um, there are uh, certain provisions in place to protect such pages. So I built a detection mechanism uh, to detect like which Wikipedia pages are gonna be vulnerable in the next like 15 days and apply like relevant like protection mechanisms so that um, we can avoid like fake news and all those, um, um, yeah, uh, basically like tampering with uh, Wikipedia data. So that was my uh, thesis over there. And while I was in Kings, I also got a chance uh, to work with another researcher um, and we presented um, a, um, a research poster in the sustainability uh, conference uh, in London. So we talk about like how to use uh, AI for like climate change and monitoring of the weather pattern and also like uh, a few suggestions as well, right? So that is one of the um, research uh, posters that um, I presented over there. Um, Right. Previously, um, I've had like quite a bit of experience, like right? working like six plus years of like professional experience. Um, I was working with SAP Labs for a long time, and I also got a small stint with the data science team, which was called Leonardo. And there, I worked on computer vision uh, projects, and it was really interesting to get my hands on images and do some um, really cool analysis uh, with TensorFlow. Right. And yeah, so coming to the LinkedIn learning part, um, right, I have been um, an inst instructor with LinkedIn learning. So uh, there is a programming language called Rust, which was previously maintained by Mozilla. And that is how I got into Rust. Um, and there is a first look Rust, which is a basic like programming course using Rust programming languages. So nowadays uh, Rust is being used uh, for blockchain applications. So if you're interested in that area, go check it out. And last but one um, is the volunteering uh, activity that I do with Datakind Bangalore. So Datakind is a global like nonprofit and uh, it's there in like uh, five, six locations across the world, including Bangalore. 
And here, like we are actually partnering with the New Delhi and the Uttarakhand uh, government's uh, uh, education um, uh, department, and we're trying to see how to build uh, dashboards for measurement of teacher training programs. So basically, like uh, they have like teacher training programs, and uh, uh, we need to measure if these teacher training programs are actually being effective right after the training is done and they've been implemented. So there are observers who go there and measure this data. And then we're trying to uh, partner with them and see if we can build some visualization of the collected data for the past like one year. But apart from that, I hope to play badminton and listen to rock music as well. Right. So that's a bit about me. So the reason why I uh, spoke um, about myself is basically uh, that I've had like um, a bunch of like experiences from different like fields of engineering, and that is actually helping me a lot in my data science um, uh, activities or the data science tasks that I do on an everyday basis. Okay, so moving ahead. So what do we have in store um, for today? So today um, we're talking about uh, topic modeling. Um, so uh, we will first talk about like why topic modeling is necessary and in which use cases we can use like topic modeling to generate uh, topics and also look at like what people are talking about if we are doing a product uh, based uh, reviews, right? Um, and analyzing them. So that is what we'll be talking about first. And if we say that, okay, topic modeling is a use case, then why has BERT topic become uh, the go-to choice uh, now? And then we will discuss the end-to-end -end flow on what happens, and then we'll dive deep into clustering and uh, mainly the um, recommended uh, clustering strategy, which is like HTB scam. That is also um, something that we'll look at. Um, and then um, we would um, look into the Amazon Alexa reviews uh, data set. So this data set, is publicly available um, on Kaggle. So if you are unaware of like what Kag Kaggle is, uh, do check it out. It's a website that hosts like competitions around like data science. They also provide like uh, public like data sets for researchers and also like um, engineers to um, build models and see uh, how their models actually perform on real data. So yeah, so that is where I got the data set from, and we will do, do we will be doing like hands-on uh, topic modeling on that uh, data set, and of course uh, we have a session to discuss the future scope of topic modeling and how um, uh, and and how things are progressing, especially um, due to the emergence uh, of the large language models, especially with the chat GPT becoming like really popular, and a bunch of people are using it for a bunch of reasons, right? We'll have a QA and a session as well, um, and you can uh, pose your questions uh, over there. Okay, so coming to uh, topic uh, modeling use case. So basically, uh, let's say that you have a product. So this product can be like a um, physical product, like the Alexa Echo, Echo Dot, or it can be a phone, or it can be a shoe, or any such um, product. Now, people uh, talk about the product, if it's popular and if it's selling, right? Like your customers mainly talk about it on different platforms, right? So for example, here um, we have a screenshot of a Amazon um, review, like Amazon, like Alexa dot sells on Amazon website, amazon.com, and somebody has left a review over there. And also we have another um, comment or a review uh, on Twitter about the same uh, product. Now, uh, since we have like uh, the data on multiple like uh, platforms, right? And these might be of multiple languages and there might be other complexities also involved, right? But th at the um, end of the, um, at, at, the, at the bottom line, um, we have the like, textual data. So which are um, in a particular language, right? Uh, again, we can use like machine learning models to convert the, like translate the languages. Um, if they're not in English and whatever your whatever the language you're comfortable with, right? And then topic modeling, uh, the main job is to pick out like um, topics from these uh, reviews so that um, somebody who's running the business can actually identify what is working well with the product and what is not working well. And also if there are some things that need to be changed, those topics can also be picked up. Right. So, for example, the first review is like we can make conversation with Echo Dot and improve our English. So, basically, improving the English language is one of the features that the, uh, the customer is talking about. And it's good for kids. So, maybe kid friendly is also like one of the things that the topic model might pick up. Right. 
And if you see in the bottom, the Twitter, the tweet, uh, basically somebody is saying that Alexa is not working in Echo Dot and my phone. So it's not working. So there is a complaint and even customer care is not picking up calls. So this actually talks about uh, two aspects, the product not working and also the customer care not picking calls. So basically this customer is unable to contact the customer care. So maybe it's a problem with the customer side or on the customer care side. Uh, but yeah, from the review, we can pick up that customer care is one of the pain points that this customer is facing. And as somebody who's running the business, uh, if there are like a lot of reviews like this, and if the topic actually gets picked up, then uh, we can see like, what is the corrective action that can be done? Uh, right for um, if, if the customer care is actually in um, uh, needs to be corrected or some action needs to be taken right and yeah so in the last column like after topic modeling like you have a list of topics so these topics are basically a clusters right so basically uh, it's a two-dimensional list so in in the first list there'll be a set of keywords which denote a particular topic and in the second list uh, there'll be again a set of uh, keywords that um, still uh, talk about the topic, right? So that is how um, this whole topic uh, modeling um, works. So there is a need for topic modeling because like there's huge amount of uh, textual data. So let's say for Amazon Echo data, you can find like five, six different data sources where people are talking about it. And you need to have like real time understanding of what are your customers talking about and what is working, what feature are they liking? And if it's a phone, it has like multiple features um, and you need to um, understand, right? Your customer uh, sentiment and also uh, what is the customer traction which is happening. So there's a huge need for topic modeling. That is what I want to say. And a bird topic uh, model actually gives a an, an neat approach to do that, right? So now there are uh, multiple um, um topic modeling techniques right and uh it's a key point to note here is the topic is not just one algorithm it's a combination of like multiple uh, different like modular uh, pieces right and uh, this can be like many algorithms together put together uh, to perform one action that is the generation of uh, topic keywords right so there is um lda which is like linear discriminant uh, analysis also uh, but uh, we've seen the results with um, LDA and uh, this one uh, and BERT. Yeah, BERT topic actually gives like better results. And contextual em embeddings can capture uh, the contextual nature of the data. So that is one of the reasons over there. And the structure, right, of the BERT topic a model. So if you see there, um, so the embeddings um, is as BERT. So the, basically what the embedding does is that there's a vectorized format. And these um, vectorized format, if you go on hugging phase and see the sentence transformer model, there are uh, many uh, sentence transformer uh, models. And uh, you can like play around with which uh, embedding technique uh, works best for you. And it's just, that logic is the same with any of these pieces, the dimensional reduction, clustering, tokenizer, waiting, uh, waiting scheme, or the topic rep uh, representation stack. So all of this um, is modular. Uh, so you can like, um, plug and play like whatever you need, right? Uh, if let's say like instead of HTTP scan, you find that K means is working for you, then you can replace uh, HTTP scan with K means as well. So this kind of this bird topic technique offers such flexibility, and that is why people are using this a lot. And yeah, new advancements in clustering uh, can be adapted very easily. Uh, so for example, you talk about like. Um, HDB scan, right? So HDB scan is doing a good job at the moment, uh, but uh, let's say after like uh, a month or two, some other um, clustering algorithm um, is doing like really better than HDB scan, then you can just like replace uh, HDB scan with that other uh, algorithm and it should uh, work fine, right? And yeah, the um, another thing that about topic does really well is the TF IDF extraction of the topic representation. So if you have done a little bit of NLP um, or studied or uh, practiced um, anywhere. So you know that the term frequency and the inverse document frequency is very important to figure out the uh, topic representation in a corpus, right? And um, the, C the class based TF IDF that is presented in the word topic uh, package uh, does a really job uh, capturing all those um, aspects, right? So basically, 
yeah, CTF IDF uh, works quite well in extracting topic representations from clusters of documents without focusing on centroid based extraction, right? Which has its share, which, which has its own share of problems. So the centroid based um, methods have their limitations and those are overcome by the CTF um, IDF representation. Okay, so now, uh, sorry, let's go to the end to end flow of um, the bird topic model. So basically the untokenized reviews are what you saw on the first page. Uh, you have your Twitter tweet and the Amazon review as a textual format. So they're like untext uh, tokenized reviews coming from the wild in the internet. And then we pass it on to the bird topic model. So basically what happens here is there are like four different layers. So first is the vectorization layer, which uses these sentence transformers given by hugging face. And it's a pipeline. So you can use like any one of those uh, transformer models. I've had good results with uh, distilled bird, right? Um, so that is something that I have used in my project. Um, so you can um, convert the un uh, untokenized reviews into a embedding using the sentence transformer model. And then we do, so what happens in the sentence transformer part, uh, the vectorization is it gives like really high dimensional data. Like there will be like, 1500 plus like dimensions of data and as as you know uh, you may have heard about this curse of uh, dimensionality right so if you have like so many like um dimensions uh the curse of dimensionality hits us and it's very difficult to kind of find the differences and even if the distances between the clusters are more are less or more it doesn't matter because there are so many dimensions so we need a dimension re reduction strategy, right? If we have large dimensions, we have to do like uh, reduce the number of dimensions. Um, so uh, earlier um, techniques were like, you might have come across like principal component analysis. So that is also one of the dimensionality reduction. Over here, they've used like UMAP as the dimensionality reduction technique. And then um, once we have um, ready with whatever is the dimension um, reduction like technique, we uh, reduce that high dimensional space of our uh, text corpus into a low dimensional space, which can be like used for clustering. So um, what uh, bird topic says is that they actually um, recommend uh, that they get good results with HDB scan. But they also support like a lot of like clustering algorithms like uh, agglomerative clustering, k-means, and like um, uh, different types of clustering. So this is like a plug and play kind of like mechanism where you have like a trial and error. So you have to like fit your data into the clustering model, see how the clusters are formed, and then take a call. Yeah, but usually HDB scan um, from the looks of it uh, performs uh, much better than the other uh, techniques. Now the next part is once the clustering is done, um, we have to see also the importance of words because like uh, frequently occurring words, uh, especially the stop words like the, uh, and like that. So if, if they're like uh, too frequently occurring also, we don't need to have them in the topic clustering. And we need to also see what are the terms which are frequently occurring and then map them. So that is where the CTF IDF um, algorithm helps us. So after these four uh, steps are done, we finally get uh, the set of topics, which is like a set of uh, keywords that I'll be showcasing you uh, shortly. So this is the end-to-end -end flow of um, bird topic model, and we will be develop, uh, delving deep into the clustering uh, aspect. Okay, so um, yeah. So like I said, right, uh, in the previous uh, slide itself, uh, clustering, um, we can use uh, HDB scan. Um, this uh, technique also supports the like, k-means. And um, if you have like a huge amount of data and you need GPU acceleration, there's something called CUML HDB scan that can also be used. It also supports like SKLN algorithms like uh, agglomerative uh, clustering, which is like a hierarchical um, based uh, clustering. So k-means actually allows you uh, to select how many clusters you would like and force like every single point uh, to belong to a cluster. So basically, even if there's an outlier, um, which doesn't actually belong to the cluster, you still want to fit it into that cluster. That is what k-means is doing because you give the number of cluster and say that uh, 
of the entire data points fit all the clusters and fit all the data points into like uh, three, four, five, or whatever the k value is, right? So yeah, as a result, no outliers will be uh, created. All the data points will be in their own like uh, clusters as Gaussian like balls or ga Gaussian spheres, right? Uh, but the problem with real world data is that not everything fits into the Gaussian like spherical structure. So sometimes like we will also see like the shape and form of the data points. Sometimes it's not just a, a spherical uh, structure. So in that case, um, we need to have like some other like strategy which doesn't really involve like centroid and centroid based like uh, calculations, right? So that is where uh, DB scan and SDB scan also comes into play. Okay, um, now um, let's uh, look at the end-to-end uh, -end flow of how the BERT topic model works. And for that, I've used the Amazon Echo like data set, uh, like uh, I discussed. So it has like a few columns, as you can see. And the column that I'm most interested about is the verified reviews uh, column. So this column uh, has, the data, um, basically the review data in a textual uh, format. And um, yeah, so um, as you can see, it's like English text. So basically uh, the, the first like few reviews seem to be like uh, positive, sorry. The first few uh, reviews seem to be uh, positive, but the last one, it says that not used like many features. And yeah, it's a great alarm, but yeah, it, it raises a few concerns, right? So this is the um, data set that we'll be working on. So yeah, so now let's uh, go to the hands-on. Um, just stop this presentation and switch over to my browser. I hope all of you can see my uh, browser. Uh, please interrupt me if you can't, right? So yeah, the first aspect of like um, any, um, uh, any programming, um, yeah, sorry, any uh, data science uh, project is to get the data, of course. So I'm using Google Colab over here. I just connect the um, notebook to a runtime. By the way, if you are in university or like college, um, I think like uh, Google Colab also offers you uh, GPU support. Um, I don't know exactly the, the free credits they offer, uh, but there is support for that. And if you want to run huge workloads, um, yeah, make use of it. And this Google Colab Pro as well, I guess. Um, yeah, it's connected. Um, so I'm just installing uh, Pandas, which is a, a Python like, package for uh, dealing with data frames and data. And I'm installing like uh, Kaggle, right? So this allows us to directly uh, fetch um, the data. Right, um, from uh, Kaggle, right? So it, it requires a Kaggle.json file, which has my API key, right? For, um, um, yeah, for uh, this one, all right? So this is the Kaggle.json file that this thing requires, right? So basically, I just like, uh, Okay, just a second. So basically in this Google Colab notebook environment, you can see that um, this JSON is saved and the file is also uploaded. So now I'm looking at this uh, data set, Amazon Alexa reviews. And if I run this, um, hopefully, yeah, the data is downloaded, awesome. And if you see the files right uh, over here, so you can see the zip file over here which is downloaded from Kaggle directly. You don't have to like uh, download it and copy paste it here or upload it. So it's a seamless way um, to do it, right? And then now I'm unzipping that zip file uh, so that I get the uh, actual like uh, data file, right? So that is also done. Let me read the data. So here you can see um, the data, uh, which is over here. There are like 350 rows, uh, sorry, 3,150 3, uh, reviews. And um, it's mostly about like people, like, uh, yeah, people and their interactions and the reviews with different variations. So the variation column is basically the model. So I think uh, the Alexa dot um, comes in different variants and uh, de depending on the variation variant um, or the model type 
of uh, echo uh, they've given the reviews for those right okay cool so now we've got our data so let's uh, begin the topic modeling um yeah so first i installed the bird topic model and this usually takes a bit right okay it's a bit small can you increase the font size okay let me try that i hope you can see it now uh, better how to get the data anjini i just um, uh, described it so basically the data set is on kegel and i installed the um, the kegel package and i've set up a api key using that i've downloaded the data into my notebook and unzipped it that's pretty much it uh, I hope you can see the screen, Dinesh. Uh, I've increased the font size. Please mention the software for blockchain once again. Uh, Elizabeth, it's not exactly a software. It's a programming language. The name of the programming language is uh, Rust, R-U-S-T. Uh, you can look it up. Um, there's also another programming language called Solidity, which is used to write uh, blockchain contracts. So you can uh, look up that as well. Okay, great. Um, the uh, bird topic model is installed, and now okay, let's check if the uh, data frame is still there. Okay, uh, it's still there. So yeah, from now here on, I'll go like line by line. I'll try to explain like as much as uh, possible. I will also provide the GitHub um, repo where I have placed this uh, notebook. You guys can uh, try it out by yourselves as well after the session. So there's no um, requirement to take notes or something like that it's because uh, the code and the slides will be shared like after the session. Uh, it's already there online uh, on speaker deck and GitHub. So you have access to it, right? So we are importing the bird topic uh, model in the first uh, line. And then like we're also importing the count vectorizer. So basically, uh, the count vectorizer uh, converts um, the uh, reviews into a embedding. So the basically it converts. So basically, the um, uh, machine, right, the computer cannot understand like English language um, or any text language. So the text has to be mapped to a vector uh, into a numeric form, right, and then it has to be then compared or like processed. Um, that is why the first step is the count, like vectorization uh, process, right? And then from here, like uh, we are uh, removing the stop words um, of English language because like mostly this data set has only like English language, but yeah, if you're working with other languages, you can do uh, the uh, stop words. You can remove the stop words for other languages um, as well, right? And then, yeah, we're just doing some like housekeeping, saying that okay, we are we are setting the text to uh, the verified reviews column, and if it's not a list like Python list, so we are converting it into a list format so that like we can pass it on to the uh, bird topic model. And then on line fourteen is where we instantiate our uh, bird topic model, right? So we have the vectorizer model which is created over here. Right, we're using our count vectorizer uh, library or package, and that uh, is our um, embedding strategy. Right, and then we pass the language as English and calculate probabilities is true. So basically, calculate probabilities. What it does is that it will calculate. Um, so for every document or like every review, so each review is a document over here. So um, basically, it calculates the probability that if there are like ten topics. What is the probability that document one belongs to this 10, uh, like topic one, topic two, topic three, topic four, up to 10? So, for each document and topic pair, there is a, a probability uh, calculated, and the highest one is actually associated, saying that, okay, this review one belongs to this topic. So, that is how that is uh, being done, right? So, this is uh, where we uh, do the fit transform. So, basically, uh, fit transform is basically where you uh, fit the model and also like um, inference uh, the results. So, we pass the text that needs to be, um, but like that needs to be um, processed. And then we get the topics and the probabilities, right? So, let's like run this. In the meantime, uh, where are the topics? Uh, declared um doyle so the topics are not declared like anywhere 
so basically we are trying to figure out the topics from the corpus right so let's say you have like 3000 reviews right in this data set from all the reviews we are trying to pick out topics that is what is the concept of topic modeling right and what is like verbose here so verbose is basically uh, to say uh, these um, uh, uh, print statements, like you say, like downloads uh, in uh, right, a hundred percent. So it's a parameter that we pass uh, to bird topic model, and yeah, so that actually um, makes the uh, model in a like the descriptions will be like in English, like a verbose manner. So there is actually you can actually uh, check out the API documentation. The bird topic model is very friendly. It's very recent. Right, it, the research was published in um, March or April, I guess, of uh, last year, and uh, they have a brand new um, uh, documentation, um, right? And then this is developed by only one researcher, from what I understand. And uh, yeah, there is a paper also uh, on bird topic model, but the documentation is really user friendly. It has a bunch of like parameters that can be uh, tuned uh, to get the topics um, that you. Funny. So, for example, so to answer um, Prasika's question, right? So you see here, Prasika, all these uh, print statements transform documents to embeddings. So first, it is transforming the documents to vectors. That is the embedding part. Then we're doing reducing dimensionality. That is the UMAP part that we saw in the slide, right? Because uh, the translation vectorization process creates um, too many like uh, dimensions and we need to reduce the uh, uh, dimensionality of the data and then finally we are doing the cluster the reduced uh, em embeddings so basically to get these statements right we are passing like um, verbose as one of our parameters where are the topics declared okay i have answered this ivan is asking how to get the keywords yeah we will see that ivan um so basically in the topics variable right uh, the keywords are also um, uh, generated. So we will have a look at that shortly. And props is probably, yes, Noel, props is the probability. Uh, okay, so so what, what we'll do now is like uh, the topics uh, have been generated uh, now, and then we'll run. Uh, so basically uh, topics of I has the uh, topic number, right? And then um, we have, so basically each review or each document has been mapped to one uh, particular topic based on the probability score. And we can see like how that mapping is done. Right? So for example, like, um, yeah, so all these uh, topics, right? So there is a topic, uh, sorry, there is a topic number and then there is a review which is associated to the topic. And we will actually uh, see like what, what, is this topic right so i will just um, run this so model dot get topic info uh, will actually get the um, topic like frequency like how frequent the topics are and if you see like minus one right so minus one the name that has been generated for minus one is music loud great play right and if you see this one right so I have a lot of fun with this thing. It controls play games, like categories, has a nice sound when playing music as well. So play music and then great play. Yeah, so all these things are getting captured in this one particular topic, right? And then let's take topic uh, two, right? Topic number two is music, music, great listen music. So yeah, so sometimes like um if like since music is what we're talking about in this use case right so in this use case echo dot is like music is one of the important things so we should be smart enough to figure out that okay music will be repeated a lot of times so let's remove the music uh, term from our corpus and then do the topic modeling right because it will skew the data otherwise so as you can see the second is about the music topic right uh, so these are the things, right? Now we have got all our um, reviews and we have assigned like topic numbers uh, to it. And now we let's visualize the uh, topics also so that like uh, we get a sense of like how closely or like how far away like these are. So this is all like coming out of the box, right? From the topic model. Uh, 
uh, we don't have to like install any uh, topic, uh, any other package to visualize it um, or do anything with that, right? So this is basically the inter uh, topic uh, distance map, right? So basically how close like um, each one topic is to another. So basically like if you see, uh, let's see this topic. So this is topic zero. And then like if you see over here, uh, if you go to topic 10, let's see what is what is what are they talking about right so topic um, 10 is very closely like associated with topic 15 right so topic 15 is talking about like hulu streaming tv watch netflix basically it's like a streaming uh, thing and what what is topic 10 talking about topic 10 is also talking about like stick like fire stick cable love stick yeah so basically it's all about the streaming or the um um, yeah, services, right? The Fire Fire TV of the Amazon uh, Prime. So what we can do in this, right? Um, yeah, okay. so I zoomed out. Yeah, I can just like run this again so that like we get the proper map again. Yeah, okay. So, oh, okay. Things have changed. Right, okay. So we can take a look at this uh, particular like topic, right? Uh, there are, there seem to be like two. Right. And then if we like really go close. So this is how you zoom in, right? This, these two topics were very close, right? So the words are like perfect Nana, perfect Nana, okay? And really loves, and so this is like not a great like uh, a topic. Like these are like close to each other, but I don't think like these are like really great. The first example that we saw of the Fire TV and the Netflix streaming, um, and Hulu, right, which is also a streaming service, is a good topic representation, right? So, yeah, so this is how you can visualize uh, topics and see how uh, the topics are like close to each other or like far away from each other. You can also zoom out any space and like, yeah, I'll let you like uh, play around with it. Yeah, this is the uh, cluster we were uh, seeing. So let's take a look at this cluster and see like what is the, yeah. Okay. So you can see here, they're very close to each other, but still they're different, right? So the first one has like Hulu streaming and this one has like Fire Stick and Fire Team, okay? Cool. Now, right. So now since um, a DB scan is a hierarchical like uh, clustering like um, mechanism. So if, if you want to know more about like hierarchical clustering, there's a lot of like material um, on the internet, but I would suggest um, like uh, reading about the um, hierarchical uh, clustering, which is also uh, built based on a decision tree concept. Basically, you need to uh, have like decisions on where to uh, call the um, tree, the decision tree. So hierarchical clustering um, is uh, built on those concepts. Now, for this uh, topic representation, let's uh, generate the hierarchical uh, tree, right? So, yeah, basically like love and love subject are all like close to each other. And then like, yeah, so basically like all the things which are related to love are like linked to each other. The easy, easy, uh, if you see the topic 16 is also starts with easy. And then topic 44 also has like easy, right? And then, yeah, so great product, there's another uh, topic with like great product, right? So basically um, similar like topics, there is also a parameter that you can set uh, in this bird topic model uh, to say that, okay, I need only like uh, 15 clusters, right? Or 15 uh, topics. Uh, and then uh, bird topic model will only give you like the 15 like best uh, uh, cluster, right? Uh, so that is also uh, possible. I think somebody raised their hand. Um, so yeah, um, do you want to ask your question? Or maybe we'll do it like um, once the uh, material is over, right? Okay, cool. Um, so this is the hierarchical representation. So it gives you like which uh, topic um, clusters are related to which ones and how you can actually um, call the um, hierarchical chart, right? So basically, yeah, it's based on the epsilon, uh, right? On how this hierarchical uh, clustering is uh, done. So if you want to have uh, more understanding about that, 
I would suggest you to um, watch um, or like read a few um, concepts in like hierarchy plus string. So that would be like more easier to understand. Okay, now to the last part and like probably the most interesting one, um, right? So we have to visualize also uh, the topic word scores and like the frequency, like what is happening with the topics, right? So let's visualize the topics, right? So let's look at topic uh, zero over here. So all the topics with Alexa are like uh, clubbed. So basically topic zero is one topic cluster and these are the keywords. So Alexa, love Alexa, love, like, having are all the keywords in this topic. And yeah, so I mean, there's no surprise over here. We're talking about like uh, Alexa's echo dot. So maybe like this is something that we have to remove from our uh, topic modeling um, uh, process. The term Alexa has to be uh, removed. And also the term echo dot right they all talk about the same thing so yeah uh, so here we get us in topic two we get a sense of like what is the feature of alexa so music is great and also like the listening to music so music is one of the things that appeals to people in this product right and also people use it to this uh, check up on the weather right and yeah so the topic three topic four all these um traces uh, I will let you um, explore and one thing that I found like really interesting from this topic modeling exercise is that uh, many people um, buy this um, Alexa uh, dot repo dot as a gift uh, to other people so that is also captured over here saying in topic four like you can see loves gift and the frequency is also quite high uh, so you can see that that is one of the insights that I can gather from this uh, topic modeling uh, exercise, right? Great. Um, okay. So let me just go back to my slideshow. Okay. I hope you can see the slide. Please stop me if you can't. So I'll briefly go through what happens. I think like uh, we are like short on time. So um, uh, I will uh, give you like uh, a few resources to learn about like HPB scan. Uh, so basically uh, what happens in HTB scan is that you transform the, uh, the space as per the density. So it's like a density based algorithm. It's coming from the, it extends the DB scan like philosophy, right? And then the full form is like really long. It's called hierarchical density based spatial clustering of applications with noise. Okay, so I will let you explore um, on what uh, exactly like each one of those uh, mean. And it might be a really interesting thing to do as well. So on the high level, after like transforming the space, it builds a minimum spanning tree. So if you work with decision trees, you might know you will come across with like minimum spanning trees. And then we uh, then the algorithm clusters the cluster hierarchy, and then uh, this cluster hierarchy is like condensed based on the min cluster size. So minimum, let's say you want like five clusters or 10 clusters, based on that, the condensation happens. And then we extract these table clusters from the tree and then that clustering uh, is what is presented to the next uh, process in the workflow, right? So there is a really ar nice article on how HDB scan works. And there is a really cool talk also uh, in 2015 by the uh, author of uh, HDB scan. Right, so it's not a part of the SKLearn package. It's a separate uh, package that you have to like install and pair on with. But it's nice, uh, nice to like uh, check it out. Right. So uh, hands on with HDB scan. So what I'll do is uh, because like we're short on time, so I actually have a um, notebook. Okay, we're already seven fifty four. Okay, so um, there is a notebook uh, which has been um, set up um, and credits to Pinecone, right? Who's another like YouTube um, YouTuber, uh, and he set up like how um, HDB scan works on like 2D data, right? And then like you can actually I'll let you explore this notebook and also watch the video. The video is there in the resources section, and here also there is the link to the repo. Right. So this actually talks in detail on like how HTTP scan works and yeah, due to the shortage of time, I will not cover this. Uh, I'll let you explore it uh, on your own and I yeah, hope it's fun. Right. Yeah. So um, again, uh, coming back to like why HTTP scan. 
uh, this is a comparison uh, given by the author of HTB scan. If you can see the uh, dark green line, so HTB scan performs like really well. It actually beats its uh, predecessor, which is the DB scan, uh, right? Algorithm for clustering. So yeah, um, but the DB scan is part of the SPL Learn library, and HTB scan is a separate um, package that you have to install. So as you see, like as it goes to like fifteen thousand, uh, one fifty thousand, and like two hundred thousand like data points, you can actually see the time consumed, and yeah, it's compared with other uh, clustering algorithms, right? Um, so. Uh, HTB scan the strengths and weaknesses on a high level. So uh, it focuses on like high density clustering. It reduces the noise clustering problem. So basically, DB scan was prone to uh, noise, uh, which uh, well, may lead to like false uh, clustering. And HTB scan actually rectified this. And in HTB scan, min cluster size parameter can be set. It's relatively like very fast, like as you saw, like internally, uh, but topic model uses like HTB scan. Although we couldn't run like HTB scan, we did run like bird topic model and we saw the topic models which are generated, right? It has a difficulty in handling like large amounts of data, but using like COML um, and the rapid um, GPU acceleration, this can be sorted out as well. And this is actually a cool um, comparison uh, of all the Python clustering algorithms. And yeah, I want to uh, quickly like run through this, right? So basically, yeah, uh, comparing like Python clustering algorithms. So uh, yeah, the code and all, I don't want to uh, touch because I'll let you explore. So uh, this is where the uh, testing starts. So first they test the k-means. So you can see here the results with the k-means. Right, and then if you go to agglomerate, agglomerative clustering, sorry, affinity uh, propagation, these are the clusters which are formed for the same data points. And then with main shift, like this noise um, identification um, that is involved, right? And then um, with spectral clustering, it gets a little better, but yeah, there are still like the cluster, the contours, right, are not like properly formed on the boundaries also are like, yeah, it's like half green and half red, as you can see. And here, yeah, this is like the agglomerative clustering or the hierarchical clustering, which is by SKLN. These are how the clustering, uh, these are how the um, uh, clusters are formed. And finally, DB scan, which is the predecessor of HDB scan. This is how it forms. And finally, yeah, we have reached like HDB scan. And you can, I think like you can see it clearly like identify like, three, four, five, six clusters like distinctively and there's noise also which is like removed. And in any like data science uh, experiment is always noise uh, that has to be dealt with. And like, yeah, he just ends with a statement saying, I think the picture speaks for itself. And I do agree with that. Right. So conclusion, okay, we've finally reached the end of the thing uh, session. I hope like, um, yeah, uh, so yeah. So to recap, like whatever uh, I said, like e even if you didn't uh, get the whole uh, conversation or the talk material, so bird topic is like modular, it's scalable, it's flexible. So if you're doing like topic modeling, do check it out, uh, do check out like topic modeling and do check out this bird topic uh, technique. Um, clustering is uh, modular. Uh, that is also something we have discussed. We can plug and play like different clustering models like, um, K means, um, HDB scan, DB scan, or agglomerative scan, like whatever is the clustering methodology. So, the assumption is that every document contains only one topic in bird topic model, right? So, that is one of the limitations uh, in bird topic. There is a limitation as well. And maybe in the future, um, this gets rectified, or maybe you can come up with your own topic modeling technique that uh, considers like uh, multiple um, topics in a single. Um, document, right, or a single review, right, and yeah, chat GPT is like blowing up right now, and large language models or generative models could definitely impact like topic modeling, so it would be interesting to see, like, it's, it's not um, feasible right now, I think, uh, to feed like 3,000 odd reviews into chat GPT and say that, hey, create uh, the topics or like uh, identify topics that are of interest, right, but maybe in the future we'll be able to do that, or maybe we can have like a subsection or 
something like that to um, test out like what results like chat GPT gives us. But yeah, be cautious. Uh, word of caution over here. It has inherent biases and chat GPT is still a research uh, experiment and it's still in testing. So there are ethical issues and moral issues as well uh, on AI, right? So please um, yeah, be conscious of that, right? And the other parts about the online topic modeling. So this is the next step for the bird topic modeling. So they're looking into, uh, the author is uh, looking into this online topic modeling, which retrains and like for incremental batches of data, they're doing the topic modeling. So that is also something that's interesting. And finally, operation cloud vendors like go hand in hand, right? So um, maybe what is the best like infrastructure to set up this bird topic? That is also something that will be discussed in the future and people are actually working on it and irrespective of like Azure, GCP or AWS, um, right? These um, services and operational part is really crucial for getting machine learning models into production. And that is the need of the art, right? I think we have like very little time for like question answers, right? So it's already like 8.01. Um, so I think like uh, I've answered a few questions already. And uh, yeah, if you have any further questions, um, just, um, um, yeah, I'll just post the links uh, to the slides in the chat in some time, in, um, like in a minute or two. And uh, yeah, if you have any questions, uh, feel free to reach out to me. And uh, I hope you had um, an interesting uh, session. The references uh, are all over here in the slide. And um, yeah, the session resources are also available. You can take a screenshot of this or um, one of the moderators can actually help me to copy paste uh, these two links. Uh, one is the slides, which is already available on speaker deck. And one is the uh, notebook. Right, um, the GitHub repo uh, that is also um, all set up for you guys to explore. So yeah, um, I hope you had a great session. Uh, do exploring, uh, uh, do keep <laughs> exploring uh, about like uh, data science and machine learning. And if you think that bird topic model is something that really strikes you and like your like uh, really curious experiment, let me know uh, about your experiments. Would love to learn more uh, about like how we are doing it and also um, help like wherever uh, possible. And I hope you have a great evening or um, great day uh, from wherever you're joining. And thank you, Analytics, with you.